in your job and the consumer insights that you look at and you harvest and you analyze. How disruptive has mobile been? Oh, it's, it's the biggest thing to come along in media, maybe ever. I mean, def, certainly in the long term, certainly since television or you know, internet, something like that. It's completely disrupted shopping. It's completely disrupted taxis. It's completely disrupted uh, food and tracking and uh, all these things. So it's just a different world we live in today where the information is at your fingertips. Where if I'm in a store and I'm wondering, is this the best price for this? Is this a good item I'm gonna buy? What are the reviews on this? Uh, is this a good price? All these things I can find out in no time. And we're quickly entering a realm where it's not even at your fingertips anymore. Now it's in your glasses. It's in your, it's voice activated. You know, I can ask my friend, should I buy this? Do I look good in this? Things like that are accessible at the, you know, at literally a wink or at the voice recognition. Um, you know, I think what we think of as mobile is going to expand from this little device into all kinds of things very quickly. Let's talk about the concept of addressable audience sure. Sure. and how um, when media, ha media has evolved yep. from guessing to fully being addressable Sure. and now mobile takes that game up quite a bit. Yep. Talk about it with the, the paradigm shift sure. of now with mobile and all the analytics that we get, the new analytics with sure. mobile, how that increases the opportunity for a fully addressable audience. Sure, I think the big thing here is location to me because addressable used to mean, and it still does to a certain extent, gender, income, all these things like that, look, super important. And, and people have made some really great uh, marketing for hundreds of years on things like that. But to have the ability to say, and they're here, or and they're there, is such a huge thing. It's this difference of looking at the blueprint of a building versus looking at it, a skyscraper sitting in front of you. Um, to be able to tell that not only is this someone in my demographic who um, I want to target with an ad or a message, but to say they're in your store or they're in this aisle in your store, they're standing in front of your product. Uh, wouldn't you like to reach them now? Uh, that is just such a huge exponential factor that we are just really kind of climbing that exponential curve. I can't wait to see where it goes. So the end of the era of spray and pray. Yeah, so, for sure. And we're, it was like, well, you know, that's the best we can do is spray and pray. Sure. That's, that can't, that's out of the, the conversation anymore, especially with the new analytics of mobile and with programmatic. Fair sure. enough? Talk about that. Sure, absolutely. So let me kind of give you some uh, examples from my research. I think the, cons the modern consumer is very smart too. They understand effort on the part of the marketer. They understand a you know, spray and pray ad versus this is a, someone who's taking some time to reach me. Um, some examples I give you from our research is uh, we asked people about where they see ads and then how they feel about these ads. Well, Snapchat was really interesting. We said, if you see an ad on Snapchat, you know, how does it make you feel? What do you think about the advertiser? Things like that. The people who responded said, the advertiser gets my generation if they advertise here. They understand us. And they say things like, this advertiser is innovative because they are advertising in here. They understand that this is not the easiest thing for the marketer to do. They had to break a little ground here. They had to step out of their comfort zone a little bit to reach me on this new platform. And it really reaps rewards because then they pay a little bit more attention to it and they have a higher um, view of that advertiser based on where they found them. And here's a kind of a non-mobile example, but the same thing happens with uh, Twitch, the video game streaming. Mm -hmm. We say, if you saw an ad on Twitch, how does it make you feel? And they say, this advertiser gets me because no one else knows about Twitch. You know, My parents don't know what Twitch is, but this advertiser found me on Twitch. They showed me an ad that's relevant or Snapchat, anything like anything new, um, and it works and they, they really like that. A lot of people have said here, and I think it's a great concept, this idea of you know mobile isn't mobile anymore. And really, we have to move to the ideal of mobility in general, where am I? And it doesn't matter what device I have. And I think the reason is, it, it's, it's our media, right? We're talking about, if I show you the best ad you've ever seen, um, and you wanna tell people about it, how are you gonna do that? You're probably gonna use your phone. You're either gonna tweet it, or Facebook it, or send it, or send it to someone on Kick, something like that. So, now it's mobile. Uh, I think the idea of, you know, Coke's share Coke campaign, 
Would you classify that as a mobile campaign? Well, we're printing things on cans. Maybe that's not, um, you know, a lot of the things, it's not a programmatic buy or something like that. But that's a mobile campaign because people are taking pictures of this and they're sending it on Instagram, they're sending it to their friends. All of a sudden, that's now a mobile campaign. So I think what we're talking about here is the share of culture. Um, if you give people something interesting and you want them, you want that earned media, you want to go viral, things like that, it's by nature a mobile campaign.